Alright guys, so I just got my Dolica, Dolica uh, 62 inch tripod. It's an AX620B100. Uh, I got it for $42 off eBay, but it you can find it on Amazon. Right now it's at around 56 I believe, but they do have sales on it for, uh, for $30 shipped with Prime. Uh, 62 inch tripod it's supposed to hold it's rated for uh, 13 pounds and it weighs about three and a half pounds itself uh, it comes in this nice box shows the details here uh, the tripod itself comes in a carry bag it's much nicer than just those little nylon drawstring bags it's actually canvas with a nylon inside uh, I already had this open so it actually Inside it does come wrapped in a plastic itself, but that's already off it. So Go on to the case first. The case has this nice strap here, a uh, nice shoulder area. Uh, my one complaint is it is kind of short, even if you open it up, uh, it's still short for me. I feel it's a little tight, but it's still fine if you're just grabbing it. You're just grabbing it and going. Uh, it's perfectly fine. Most of the time the, can the tripod itself is going to stay on the uh, on the backpack, on the tripod attachment. Uh, inside the bag, right here, there is a zipper and it has the uh, instruction manual, not that you really need it. And I threw the tag that was on the tripod in there. But uh, if you're not taking a bag with you, you're just taking a camera, lens, and tripod, you could stick, you know, lens cleaners, some filters. So it's a pretty decent sized pocket. I want to say about Let's say the zipper opening itself four inches, but the pocket itself is maybe six, and then it's about three or four inches deep. So you know, good good size. I mean, I can almost fit my hand in there. So pretty good size. Like I said, nylon on the inside, so it's it is water resistant, and it's padded here on the on the bottom. Uh, zippers work smoothly. I haven't had any problems with them coming off or getting stuck. Uh, so now onto the tripod itself. Uh, it is the Pro Line. So it's a little heavier duty than all of Dalika's other products. Um, it is a ball head and it is aluminum construction. Uh, start. Uh, I guess we'll start at the top first. The uh, ball head itself, which you can see here, it's got, unlike the Manfrotto's, it only has one lever. It doesn't have the friction lever. It just has the one to lock it down. But I mean, moves very smooth, locks down, very pretty snug. I mean, I'm putting, you know, pretty, you can see I'm putting good force in it and I didn't even really crank it down so that's nice uh, the only really bad reviews it did have were for the head so it looks like I did get a good one very few people had a bad one but when there were a complaint it was for the head uh, if you do have a complaint about the head or if you want to upgrade later on the uh, Manfrotto 94 or 494 RC2 yeah, 494 RC2 is a direct replacement, and it's much it's a much nicer ball head. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, for a $30 tripod, what do you expect? But it will. This definitely will get the job done. I've been playing with it for a couple hours. Um, yeah, and it's a direct replacement, as you can see here. This will just unscrew. If I'm doing this right, hold on. I have to hold the bottom here. This unscrews. And then you got the tripod itself and the ball head. So that's nice. So you can replace the ball head should you want to upgrade later or if you get a defective one or if it wears out, uh, you can do that. Um, so let's put this back on here. It's just screws right back on. Okay. Uh, as for the head itself, it has the quick release, uh, but it's not like the cheap quick releases like uh, the twenty dollar uh, tripods you can get at Walmart or Office Depot or something, Radio Shack. Um, it actually has a safety lever. You can't just pull on it. So if your watch gets stuck or you know you bump it or something, your camera's not gonna fly off. You actually have to push this lever in to be flush and then pull out on it, and then the quick release comes off. Which obviously it wouldn't just pop off when you have the camera on there, but it's nice. And then to put it on. Uh, slip it in and when you push down it clicks into place so it is pretty tight right now I'm assuming because it doesn't have much wear to it it's only been out for about an hour or two so it's been on and off this is probably the fifth or sixth time I've popped it on and off so the tripod itself three legs 
as you can see here. Uh, it's got the foam grips, which are nice. If you do live in cold weather, I'm here in Miami, so take them or leave them. But it, it's nice to have. If I'm holding it over my shoulder, it has a little bit more padding. Uh, just a little thicker, so I'm not, you know, my hands aren't closed as much. If you have bigger hands, that might be an issue for you. But that, that's nice here. Uh, it's got the little hook, spring loaded, so it's, it stays hidden there. You know, just this little tip sticks out. But it, so if in a heavy winds, or if you're on a boat, or you know something you can hang your camera bag off that or add some stones some weights uh, that'll hold it down uh, okay the head the height adjustment here has this shaft and it's just tightening and locking this collar it's nice it's pretty fluid uh, a lot of people say you can't pan and tilt you can pan but the issue is you can only pan if it's at this lower height so if you loosen this up now I can pan here which works fine as long as you don't need to be at that max height when you're fully extended. Um, right here on the tripod, you may be able to see there is a compass, which if you're backpacking might come in handy. And there's also a bubble level, which I personally don't use, but it's it's there if you want it. There's also one on the on the quick release, which I didn't mention, but it's there. Uh, okay. So as far as the legs, they're quick quick snaps, not uh, rotating collars. Extend total 62 inches full height once uh, you extend the shaft here. Uh, without the extension, I'm going to say it's about 57, so it's, it's a nice height. Uh, quick straps are fine, uh, they're, they're, they work better than cheaper versions. You can feel they're actually snug down, the construction's tight. Uh, only one that I have a problem with is one of these last legs here. It is a little, see look, actually kind of this one is, once it's in there, one of these here, this one, the last leg, gets a little tight and it, it wants to stop like right there and I'm kind of scared to force it because I don't want it to get stuck in there and then not be able to extend it later. But that's the only issue I've had with the legs. So other than that, I mean, again, $30 tripod, so what do you, I mean, don't expect something. But it's it for thirty dollars. If you're gonna go and spend twenty on that fifty-seven Vivitar or you know a Bauer of sixty or something, you're much better off spending the extra ten on this. See here we go. This quick snap is tight, and oh no, it's just a quick snap that's tight on that one. So that's another issue I didn't notice. But there you go. Uh, the feet are rubber, but if you screw in, you have nice little spikes. So if you are in the dirt. Uh, you have that. I'm just going to leave them in the rubber so I don't scratch any hardwood floors or something. Uh, okay, then the legs themselves pop open here. These got these little safety pins and it will fold flat. Got to extend this. It'll fold almost flat there. Okay, uh, and then it also has a s intermediate one right in the middle which is there all right then you can also remove the hook if you unscrew that which i think i just tightened it by accident oh no there it goes okay uh unscrew the that that you can insert this from below you should be able to insert this from below might be doing something wrong. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, insert this from below, lock this collar down, and now you can mount your camera upside down or closer to the ground to get some macro shots. So that's a nice feature, also. Uh, crank this back down here. Let's get this up. Okay. I'll just leave the hook out of the way for now. Um, okay, so now as far as that out of the way. Okay, so, oops. Okay, here's the head. Pop that off. So it's got this little thumb screw in here. Here's my Sony A300 with the uh, battery grip. It's got two batteries in it, so that's some added weight. That almost doubles the weight of the body. 
and then I also have a Minolta Maxim 100 to 200 f 4.5. It's the heaviest lens I have. It's full bo metal body, so uh, it does have some weight to it. I just wanted to pick the heaviest things I had just to show you how the uh, tripod holds the weight. So, so pop that in, and okay, well I wasn't level there, but that doesn't matter. Uh, all right, so see there, there we are. It's pretty, pretty stable. Obviously, I'm not at the widest. If I go wider, I'll be more stable. I can go higher. Still, still stable. I mean, not locked in here, but I mean, I can move it. But if you know, if it's not windy, it'll be fine. Like, like I said, you have the hook here. Um, pretty good tripod it doesn't the legs don't flex like the cheaper you know the $20 Vivitars or Bowers uh, the feet hold well on these top floors I mean no no real no real slip I have to really you know that's not even slipping it's compressing the legs so there you go um yeah so here's the ball head dynamic here if I drop this drop the legs back down Trying to do this one-handed, probably shouldn't. Okay, so here's the ball. Okay, and as you can see, I can go port portrait. I can go angled if I want to. You know, I can tilt down, back. You know. So let's say you know for whatever odd reason I want this right here. Lock this down here. Holds it pretty well. I mean, that's heaviest lens I have. The extra battery grip. You know, that's probably a good, I want to say, eight, nine pounds on there, and no issue. So, definitely, like I said, the only issue I have, and other people have had, are, well, I don't, but the head. Some people do complain about the head, that it doesn't lock in place. I barely have to, you know, once I feel it snug, see, I'm not even going to crank down. Here's completely loose, okay, there's snug, barely wiggling. Now, just a little quarter turn more, that's not going anywhere. Uh, so I don't have a problem with the head. If I do later, I can upgrade to the Manfrotto, like I said earlier in the video. Um, legs are fine, except for that one that's a little tight. That one quick snap that I just discovered is a little tight. Other than that, it's it's pretty nice. I mean, here's take this back off. Form factor wise, if I wanted to stick this in a carry-on suitcase, I don't see any reason why I couldn't. Because I mean, look at it. It's about. I don't know, let's say 20 inches. I, worst case, it would go angled across the bottom of a carry-on. It's perfectly fine. Weighs nothing. I mean, I can pick it up pretty easily. I mean, here's one finger. Thank you, finger. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't weigh a thing. I mean, it's nice. It's it's pretty... You can tell. You hold a, a, those little cheap Vivitars or, you know... I mean, I keep bashing on that Vivitar, but it's the only one I have experience with. I had a $20, you know, from Radio Shack or Walmart or whatever I got as a gift, and it's, it's night and day difference. Just just the construction, you can feel this is firm. I, I I don't really know how to put it into words other than it's it's really firm. It's it's solid. It's really solid built, which I'm surprised for. I mean, I saw all the reviews, but I was still skeptical for $40 when, you know, it, it's nearest competitors, a $150 Manfrotto or the uh, 150 $15 uh, Benro carbon fiber which doesn't even come with a head so uh, I, I was pretty skeptical but uh, it seems like this is gonna work out if something does happen I'll, I'll post another video but uh, thanks for watching I, I hope that helped you out uh, I know I took a little long and I rambled but uh, wanted to make sure I, I included everything uh, I think I touched on everything head uh, movement the collar compass, uh, level grips, uh, legs and the quick snaps and the feet. Uh, quick release works well, I mean, holds the weight of this heavy, you know, this whole body and uh, and lens combo and the grip. I mean, it, it's, this would not have held up on that 57 Vivitar I had. Uh, any, anywhere, I, I, if I wanted a straight shot, I would have had to have locked it in up here just because it would have sagged. There's no way I would have been able to get a shot sideways because the quick release would have started to swivel which on this you can see that rubber padding it's got this does it's not turning which is really nice 
Because I see, you know, that's another thing. I've seen some people say that uh, when they have the camera on, I'm rambling again, sorry. But when they have the camera on portrait, they start to see the camera start to rotate downward. I'm forcing it right now because the quick release starts to slip. I'm not seeing that issue here on its own. If I force it, I can. I also don't really have that as tight as I can go because I didn't want to over tighten it onto the battery grip. But yeah, like I said, no complaints so far. I'm really happy with the purchase. Uh, if you need a, I'm not gonna say this is the best tripod in the world. It is cheap, uh, but it is light. It's compact. It's perfect for traveling. Uh, if you, you know, if you're scared about losing your $150 Manfrotto or $200, $300 tripod, uh, definitely say pick one of these and have the the peace of mind that if it does get banged up, lost, stolen, breaks, hiking, I mean, it's rather lose 40 than not. But I, I'm pr I'm pretty good at taking care of my stuff, so I, I look forward to seeing how the, how this uh, you know puts up with my use. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, sorry for rambling. Just wanted to make sure I got everything for you.